Welcome to the Mental Models Podcast. I'm George Baxter, and I'm a hedge fund manager for SaberPoint Capital Management. I'm Dan Krawczyk. I'm a neuroscientist and professor at the University of Texas at Dallas. And together we explore mental models. That is how we view the world and what the world gives us for feedback. It's not a brain in a jar. That's the gist. We decided that we would put together uh, this podcast to share some of the great conversations that we have had in the process of writing a book that Dan and I are uh, collaborating on based on bias associated with financial decisions. I think one of the unique things about Dan and I is really the diversity of our backgrounds. Dan, will you tell us a little bit about how you came to become a neuroscientist? Well, I'm kind of like a college student that never left campus. <laughs> My story is a little bit more, I guess you'd say, uh, roundabout than Dan. Uh, I started off uh, in undergraduate studying biology and psychology and went right into doing my PhD in neuroscience and cognition. I then went on to be a postdoctoral researcher at UC Berkeley learning about brain imaging. And then I moved to Dallas to become a professor of behavioral and brain science at the University of Texas at Dallas, which is a young, innovative institution. So I didn't quite have a linear path in my career. I started off uh, when I graduated from college. I wrote books about strategy games and played one professionally for a bit. Uh, ultimately, because I had a desire to raise a family and some lucrative endeavor that I was engaged in, I went to law school. While I was in law school, best friend at the time, and, and still today, really started exploring value investing. By the time I graduated from law school, I was pretty sure that that's what I wanted to do, but I achieved this law degree and decided that I guess I'd practice for the next six years and save enough money to perhaps run uh, a bit myself, which is what I did. I ended up eventually leaving the practice of law and launching my own hedge fund in October of 2007, which just also happened to be the peak of the S&P 500 before the financial crisis. So it was not exactly the best timing in the universe. Ultimately, it worked out. Today, I am a CEO and manager of a hedge fund by the name of SaberPoint Capital Management. Really have the opportunity to do this thing that I've come to love. I can apply strategic thought to the endeavor of putting capital to work. That is also wrought with all sorts of psychological bias. And it sounds like your background is very diverse, and that may help you in your current role. So while it, it sounds like a sort of a winding path to get there, you've got kind of this common thread of a very active uh, imagination and active application of strategy. Uh, Dan has pretty in-depth knowledge as exactly what it is that's going on in my brain. So uh, it makes for... Uh, a great narrative and a great conversation. We'll be examining our mental models. And what a mental model is, is this, this idea that we have a structure in our heads of what's going on in the world. And all of us have our own private structure of sorts uh, and our own interpretations and biases within that mental model. In the field of psychology and neuroscience, the term mental model goes back to this idea that we need to think about what's actually in the mind and make a differentiation. It's not everything that's out in the environment. You know, our attention is limited. We can only take in so much. We only find certain things in the environment interesting. And so out of that, we're building this running narrative in our minds. And, and over time, we start to develop expectations about the world. And those representations can have uh, visual information or or speeches or people talking. And uh, it can also be about a lot of the invisible forces in our world. So we live in a complex electronic world with a lot of transactions that take place that we can't physically see. So we're left to basically develop our own sort of subjective sense of how things are working. And we'll be exploring the, uh, the gaps and the consistencies and the challenges uh, that that perspective taking presents us with. Yeah, and it's interesting. In, in the world that I come from, the world of finance, mental models uh, is a term that was adopted by Charlie Munger to describe uh, the approach to investing where you take a lot of different knowledge from various disciplines and you crossbreed them. You basically draw on knowledge from different professions uh, where otherwise people are somewhat siloed, and then you try to have wisdom by bringing them all together. 
our hope is is that we can go and uh, initially explore the biases, the issues associated with any sort of uh, system that we come up to analyze or that we use to analyze the world, uh, and then perhaps bring in some other professionals that we'll talk to at some point in time uh, about the systems that they employ and where there may be biases that are latent within uh, those systems. That's right. And you mentioned the book that we're working on is called Bias, and it's an exploration of the cognitive biases that we have and how they work in the world. And that's often in the case of finance. Uh, you and I have talked a lot of, about these different issues, and I think there's a lot of value in a multidisciplinary approach. So I don't have an investing background, um, but I've thought about values and rewards and penalties in the brain. I've thought about a lot of the uh, more instinct-driven emotional systems of the brain, and, and we have these huge expanded amounts of cortex as humans, and that allows us to uh, have this very rich stream of consciousness to where we start to build all of these uh, features of the world into meaningful units. We're very curious, we're very driven to find cause and effect information. And so our mental models are all about figuring out the world. And it's interesting, Dan and I actually, our kids went to school together and that's how we came to, uh, to meet. And uh, we would often get together when we had gatherings associated with school and we'd be talking about uh, bias and things like uh, uh, mental models and, and views that people have and how that relates uh, to finance. I see it every day. There's uh, a lot of instances that come up where people have a certain way of looking at the world or looking at a particular company or industry and they form narratives associated with those views, uh, which are just replete with bias and all sorts of distortions that come about because of brain function. That's right. We, we have to take shortcuts, and we have a lot of blind spots in how we're seeing the world. And I think an important part of this is to establish, what we'd like to do is to establish a, a way to talk about some of these invisible features out in the world. Bias is one term. Um, sometimes people will uh, name an effect after some colorful sort of example. Um, and I think one of the challenges I have as an academic who's always reading scientific literature and conducting lab-based experiments using things like brain imaging or brain stimulation, and we tend to measure how fast decisions get made, uh, the quality of decisions, but they're always in very controlled lab-based experiments, which are a far cry from what's going out in the real world. And I think what I value of, about these opportunities for conversations is that we can start to think about how lab-based effects play out in the real world. Um, what are the common uh, aspects that we can take away from it? And ultimately, what can we give by way of advice as to how you can craft your life and your work uh, to better uh, optimize uh, the kinds of mental models you build? And uh, that's an ongoing project. Yes. And... It, it, our, our hope is is that we're able to bring our two different perspectives together to have a more complete answer to a lot of the behavioral bias issues that come up. I've seen a lot of literature that has been either written by academics or that it's written by practitioners that suffer from weaknesses on both sides. Either, either it's a lack of practical experience on the part of the academic when it comes to finance, or it's a lack of understanding of the body of knowledge that has been explored for many years about behavioral finance uh, that has been done on the part of academics that's not appreciated by the practitioner. It's, it's very hard to address a lot of these biases. We'll be talking about how they emerge somewhat naturally from uh, what the brain is, and, and it's it's often helpful to, to kind of step back from these kind of applied cases and ask, well, what, what is the brain for? What what does it do? And and I think of it as a set of electrical circuits, really, that help us get through life. So a lot of what the brain does is actually um, basically regulate our body, uh, keep us moving through the day, obtain rewards, avoid threats, and on top of that, we 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 have this interesting. Uh, consciousness that's informed by um, our basic needs, but it's also informed constantly by incoming inputs from the environment. And uh, we become, in a sense, experts at interpreting a lot of these 
uh, complex situations. And we know when we become an expert, we we lose that um, ability to notice uh, the the unusual features, and that's where bias really comes from. It's it's going down a well traveled route and sort of not moving off of it. And occasionally, contexts come up that uh, we really do need to check our assumptions and reason more actively to overcome uh, possible challenges. Yeah, I think that's ultimately our hope. And uh, perhaps that also we can go and address uh, certain practical situations that uh, we've seen, I've experienced in finance illustrate some of these issues that come up when we're trying to understand how it is that we think. That's right. And thinking and reasoning are, are terms that we'll be using as well as the mental model perspective in general. Um, one of the things I'd like to bring up is this idea of you can basically simulate things with a model. So just like a, a model airplane, uh, you can sort of examine it and, and tinker with it. Uh, you can do that with mental models as well. And we have this phenomenon called brain plasticity, which is uh, the brain is not a fixed system. It, it modifies, it learns, and electrical connections can strengthen and weaken within our minds. And so we can take an active role in uh, sculpting the model and simulating things before they happen. And, and so this is part of active thinking that we'll cover as well. How can we engage in practices that better predict what the world is going to show us and then be open to feedback from the world. Now, hopefully, we'll be able to think about a lot of different models and a lot of different ways that we look at them. We can ultimately improve the picture that we have to be able to understand the world around us. In many ways, I'll be serving as your guide to the brain throughout uh, these episodes, and George will be serving as more your guide to how the world works. And between the two of us, we hope to uh, learn and uh, teach you something new along the way. With the first several episodes, we'll introduce a variety of types of mental models and terms that are relevant to understanding that uh, interplay between the world out there and your inner world in the brain. And we will examine a lot of the cognitive biases which we've been studying and thinking about, not only the uh, research background for them, but also try to give you a lot of examples where this happens in the real world and what you might be able to do about it. Thank you for spending your time listening to the Mental Models Podcast. Content matters because your brain does not exist in a jar. Please subscribe. Visit mentalmodelspodcast.com for updates on Dan and George's upcoming book release titled Understanding Behavioral Bias, A Guide to Improving Financial Decision Making. Also available on mentalmodelspodcast.com are show notes, book reviews, and upcoming behavioral finance seminars with Dan and George. The Mental Models Podcast can be found on SoundCloud, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Twitter. Please subscribe, and thank you for listening.